Greetings. This is the day that the Lord had made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is Pastor Frank Kelly here from the King's Chapel, United Pentecostal Church, Albion Road, Montego Bay, Jamaica. And I'm here to share with you the words of the Lord and just to remind all of us that he is coming again not to scare you or to press you in changing your life but to really let you know that Jesus Christ is coming again and that all of us will have to be prepared and be at a place where he can receive us our church matter is we are a church that shares and cares and in this time of uncertainty we want to let you know that Jesus Christ cares for you and so I am taking the time to express this to you to let you know that Jesus cares for all of us let us pray Lord Jesus we want to thank you for today we want to thank you for life Lord, we want to thank you for hope. We want to thank you for the promise of your return. Lord, at this time in our world, there are many persons who are grieving the loss of a loved one. Sure enough, Lord, we do not understand but you understand exactly what's happening and so we place everything in your hands we place the grieving family members lord we pray for those who are in the hospitals maybe at home wherever, wherever they are going through some difficulties some hardships lord we present them to you and we ask, O oh God, that you will take full control of their lives. Heal their bodies. Lord, restore them to perfect health. Lord, and as I about to share your words, O oh God, I pray that you will intervene and that you will give directions. The Lord bless you, friends, and thank you for joining in. Um, uh, we want to thank you for tuning in. God bless you as I share with you the words of the Lord today. And my topic is the promise of Christ's return. The promise of Christ's return. We don't know when, but we are assured by his words that he will return. And so I'm reading from, to you from Titus chapter 2 and verse 11 to verse 13. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Denying Friends, we have 
a choice. God did not make us, made us like robots where buttons are pressed to give us directions and to turn us anywhere. But God has given us the privilege as humans to choose choose for ourselves here Paul writing Timothy he says we should deny 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 and the word deny means exactly what it says deny put off worldly lust Around us today, we find that men would rather the pleasures of this world than to be in fellowship with God. It's very sad. And even at this time, when we are so fearful of this virus, Men, women, boys and girls will tend to want to, I said, want to pray and want to talk about God. But we have seen in history in the past when problems hit us and we would uh, indicate desire. And some persons have even gone as far as to get baptized. But then they baptize out of fear. So I'm not trying to drive any fear in your hearts. Because we've got to serve God out of a heart of L-O-V-E. We have to love him and understand. Look, God places us on this earth. And he gave us the wisdom, the understanding, and I would say the privilege to choose. He didn't choose for us. Yes, he could have made us as robots. But he has allowed us to choose for ourselves. And so this virus should not be that pushing you to serve God. Come on, friends, you gotta serve God out of love. L O V E. Love. Not out of fear. Fear for what is gonna happen. We're gonna love him. Because if if we are if we're gonna come to him out of fear, it means that we're not gonna last. As soon as this is past, if God permits, we go back to the same. Only. But Paul said, denying ungodliness. We've got to put ungodliness aside. Worldly lust. We should live soberly, consciously, righteously in this present world. Guess what? Because we're looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ yes I want you to understand today that eternity is long and death is not the end it's the start it's like sowing our seeds that seed must first die and after that death of that seed there comes the growth of it so that is not the end of it it's merely the beginning because eternity has no ending and so we as Christians we are excited about the fact that we have a better life that is coming and so we 
feel obligated to tell you, to encourage you to seek for that better life. The Bible says, if in this life only we have hope, we would be like most men miserable. But St. Paul said, thanks be to God. Our hope is not in this world, but in the world to come. Now, what is happening today? It's just a glimpse of what is going to take place. And here it is, all the leaders, the presidents and prime ministers are trying. But all they can do is to talk and wait. God is in control. And friends, those who are in the church, and I'm not talking about the building now. Because the building is not the church. The building is the house, is the assembly. The church is us, human beings where the Spirit of God dwells in. It's important for us to cherish the Spirit of God, the love of God, and to remain in the church, remain on our knees, reading our Bibles. You see, today Christianity, it seems to many, it's nothing, but I'm telling you, after death, comes the resurrection and after the resurrection there is going to be judgment so my encouragement to you today is to see God the blessed hope to the Christian the most blessed thought is the hope of the Lord's return here are other comforting scriptures and these are scriptures I'm going to give you today but the glorious event that is coming, the glorious time that is coming, that gets us as Christians, as child of God, excited about our hope. Yes, in this body, we're going to get sick. We're going to have problems. We're going to have financial difficulties, hardships. But there's coming a better life where there won't be any death. So Christ was once offered... To bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him. Praise God. Shall he appear the second time. Without sin. Unto salvation. Hebrews 9 and verse 29. To them that look for him. Shall he appear. The second time. Let not your heart be troubled. He believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there he may be also. St. John 14 and verse 3. Yes, he has gone to prepare a place for us. My God, the Bible speaks about heaven as streets of gold. He said there won't be any more weeping. We weep now. We have lost our loved ones. We mourn. No more pains. No more diseases. My God, what a place. I don't think nobody on earth, praise God, nobody on earth would want to miss heaven. And so, friends, I'm encouraging you to give your life to Jesus Christ because there is no better hope. Hallelujah. Acts 1 10 to 11 says, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, the whole two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him going up to heaven. Praise God. Yes, they watched him go. Hallelujah. But guess what? He is coming again. That same Jesus 
Christ, praise God, who was crucified on the cross of Calvary, who was mocked, my God, who was stripped naked, who was pierced in his side, who the dried the nails in his hands, and they said, away with him, give us Barabbas, this same Jesus Christ, amen, that went up to heaven is going to come is in the same manner the Bible says and the trumpet shall sound oh God and the dead in Christ shall rise first Philippians 3 verse 20 to 21 tell us listen to this hallelujah this is how important it is and I want everybody who's listening right now praise God to listen carefully what we should do, he said, for our conversation is in heaven. Hallelujah. I'm not saying that we should be so heavenly minded that we are no earthly good. Praise God. But our conversation should be in heaven. It should be a hope, giving hope, hope to the dying, hope to the lost. My God. Mm. From whence also we look for the Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. Hallelujah! 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 What a day! What a time, what an excitement. Right now, today, we are confused, we are worried, we didn't see this coming. What is happening to our world? People are dropping like flies. Oh, praise God. But I'm telling you, friends, there are some exciting times coming around. Amen. And I want to encourage the Christians, the believers, to stay in the church. Stay in the church. Let's look at some of the signs of his coming. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nearing the return of the Lord, we will witness, as we are seeing today, a eh? great moral, spiritual decline. Even persons professing today to be Christians. They have moved away from the doctrine of Jesus Christ, the principles, and they are living a life that is not acceptable to God. There are great moral and spiritual decline. When last have you prayed? When last have you fasted? When last have you read your Bibles? Do you witness to your co workers? Do you tell your family about Jesus? All about your standard of holiness. Mm, we increase in technology and travel. Oh my God. You talk about all of these technologies. You can stay right here in Jamaica and communicate to anybody in any part of this world. My God, technologies as increased oh Jesus increase in violence oh my god or a little island of Jamaica where we record so many killings and we wonder when is all of this going to stop our young men some of them who used to come to church oh, their hearts has become so wicked and so cruel that they would kill just for anything at all. Not just in Jamaica, but the entire world. They are killing, they are fighting. My God, can't we see reverence? All oh, the interests of our young people, especially today, is to revel parties. No time for church. No time for God. But God has shown us today that He is in charge. He has stopped 
everything as it were overnight. Amen. Right now there are 18 million persons in America who have signed up for unemployment benefits. There are so many persons out of jobs in Jamaica. People are out of jobs. Entire world. God is in charge. When he speaks, he means it. It might not come through the time what you are looking for. But guess what? It's coming to pass. It's coming to pass. Heaven is real. Hell is real. It doesn't matter what we have. Oh, Jesus. Timothy 3. 2 Timothy 3. 1 to 8. I want to read it to you. Read the scripture, but it's important. This know also. That in the last days, perilous time shall come. Hmm. Is it here? For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers. False accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those things that are good, traitors, eddy, I minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Let me read it again. Lovers of pleasure. More than lovers of God. Even our own cell phones. That is so effective. You know, Depends on how you use it. That cell phone. Has become so dear to us. Even more than God. I've seen where persons. Leave their phones at church. And travel miles out. And they remember they come back for their phones. They return to pick up their phones. But we have dozens of Bibles at the church put down. Persons of no interest even to ask, have you seen my Bible? But the phone, they can't live without it. They can't live without the phone. My God. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Is this so, brethren and friends? Huh? We love our money. We love the pleasures of life. Huh? More than all we love God. We don't have no time for church. No people have all the time. I felt so bad on Sunday when persons came by the church while doing the recording. I had to let them know that we can't, we have to go because of the government restrictions. When you should be inviting people and getting them to come to church, you are saying to them, Oh, we have too many persons here and we don't want to go against the government's restrictions. You prefer you pray and you leave. My God. Mm. My God. Having a form of godliness. Yes, everybody today say they are Christians. Huh? Yes. Everybody claim to be a Christian. Having a form of godliness. But denying the power of God thereof from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins 
Little away with divers lust. Ever learning. And never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janis and Jambres withstood Moses. So do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. My God. Men that preaches false doctrine, pulling ladies, especially by Bible speak about women, because women seem to be attracted to so many things. There are so many demonic forces um, and powers around that it resembles the things of God, but they're not of God. And these women especially allow themselves to be pulled away, drawn away from the truth. From even their husbands, from their families, and allow the devil to have them mixed up and messed up. But I want to say today, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we're going to stand resolute. We're going to stand for truth. We're going to stand for righteousness. We're going to stand for holiness. Praise God. I'm not driving fear in you. No, I don't want to. I'm driving love. I want you to love God. I want you to surrender your life to God. Second Peter 3, 1 to 7, and verse 13. Listen carefully. That he may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the old prophets. And of the commandment of us, of the apostles of the Lord Jesus and Savior. Knowing this first, that they shall come in the last days, scoffers, walking after their own lust. Yes, yes, scoffers, walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation for this they willingly are ignorant that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the heard standing out of the water and in the water whereby the world that was then was been overflowed with water perish yes in the days of no it was wickedness on the land. My God. That even when God told Noah to build the heart, it was a he was a laughing stock. And today, as we preach the word of God, we are a laughing stock. And even when Noah gathered up the animals and start to direct them to the heart, oh, he was mocked and drear. As a madman. But Noah closed the door of the heart. And the rain started. Mm. The rain started. The flood started. And that's when men start to realize oh, this is serious. Now we hear a person saying this, this virus is serious. The Prime Minister doesn't take drastic measures. It is serious. Huh? Are we going to wait until the door is shut? Oh, Lord. Mm. Whereby the world that was then being overflown with water perish. But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store. Reserve on the fire. It's not going to be water next time. It's going to be fire. F-I-R-E. Fire. Against the day of judgment. And perdition of the ungodly men. Nevertheless. We according to his promise. Look for new heavens. And a new earth. Wherein dwelleth. Righteousness. My God. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts 
shall they eat to themselves, teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their hearts from the truth and shall be turned to fables. Second Timothy 4, 3 to 4. The time will come and now is when people are moving away from sound doctrine. They rather to listen to stories. They rather to hear the preacher said, raise your right hands and confess Christ and you're saved. They rather that than to repent, turn around, repent of their sins and be baptized in the only cleansing, saving name of Jesus Christ and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Men, rather darkness than light. Oh, Jesus. Mm. But thou, O oh Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro my God, and knowledge shall be increased. Daniel 12 and verse 4. Many friends, there are so many legal and illegal migrations. People are running to and fro. The bottom line is what? Money. There's going to come a day when money will not be able to purchase nothing. They talk about a great storm of locusts in Africa where many crops has been eaten down. I guess all of that has been overshadowed by the, the coronavirus situation. But friends, the Bible tells us, what shall it profit a man if he gains his whole world and loses one soul? What shall a man give in 